Robots are evolving out of the factory and into public spaces occupied by humans. Service robots are more commonplace as overwhelming issues pressure our everyday lives and economy. The COVID-19 pandemic saw companies turn to robots to help fill the labor gap. They have been used in hotels and warehouses to disinfect rooms. They've helped doctors take care of patients, and delivery bots have been used to transport goods. Robots continue to see new use cases as we define a new normal within the pandemic. However, the journey of robots for public spaces creates new questions, such as how we define social robots and how they should be deployed. How will the social relationship between human beings and robots change? Find out now in Mechanical Engineering Magazine's Special Report. When highlighting the journey of human-robotic interaction, it begins with collaborative robots. Collaborative robots, better known as cobots, are robots designed with their human counterparts in mind. The first cobot was designed by Northwestern University professors Edward Colgate and Michael Peshkin in 1996. Their patent described a cobot as an apparatus and method for direct physical interaction between a person and a general purpose manipulator controlled by a computer. It took almost a decade until commercially viable cobots hit the market. KUKA released its first LBR3 cobot in 2004. Universal Robots closely followed with the UR5 in 2008. Since then, Universal Robots has become the leader in the cobot market with more than 50,000 cobots sold worldwide. In 2020, revenue generated by cobot sales reached 594.1 million US dollars. By 2026, revenue is projected to reach close to 1.5 billion US dollars. Ken Hackler, professor at Mesa Community College, one of the largest community college networks in the US, discusses how his students gravitate towards collaborative robots as the future of automation. They're all a little intimidated at first and then kind of shocked uh, how much easier it is to work with than what they first assumed. I think that's the biggest thing is they thought it was going to be a lot more complex. Cobots have built-in safety features such as force feedback, advanced vision systems, and collision detection to help avoid coming into contact with people. This allows them to work alongside humans and become crucial pieces of equipment along assembly, sorting, and packaging lines. Technological advances such as enhanced vision systems, low-cost sensors, and cloud computing have enabled robots to become more intelligent and aware of their surroundings. To me, I think the number one thing that has changed is not even as much as the robot itself the vision systems. Um, there's a lot of different technologies that are being developed, and certainly the cameras and camera costs have come way down. All of that allows robots to build a better understanding of what's happening around them and then react accordingly. I will say the one common theme is that, you know, robots these days are much more software dependent. There's so much more AI being developed and deployed on all platforms. Um, and that's a trend we are seeing and we'll, we know we'll continue to see. The cobot adoption surge has been one of the turning points that has opened the door for other types of robots to enter the public space. As robots have entered the consumer market, they have performed duties mainly in the background. The most well-sold house robot has been the Roomba from iRobot, a robot able to navigate autonomously around your home to vacuum and clean floors. Since 2002, more than 30 million versions of the Roomba have been sold. Home robot sales have increased year over year since 2016. In 2020, the Consumer Technology Association estimated 1.4 billion US dollars in sales. Tally from Simbi Robotics is an inventory robot used in supermarkets. The robot travels up and down the aisles, scanning shelves and updating inventory quotas, 
ensuring that the shelves are fully stocked. Jeff G., co-founder and chief design officer of Symbi Robotics, describes how Tally helps free workers from mundane and repetitive tasks. Really, Tally was created to modernize the uh, in-store retail operations. Historically, it's this manual mundane task of running around and looking for things. And um, Tally will um, roam environments up and down the aisles, basically looking for misplaced items, out of stock, the price is wrong on the tag or the promo tags are wrong. And what we do is uh, that information, we collect hundreds of thousands of data points per scan and we uh, uh, put that together in something that's actionable uh, through Symbi's intelligence system. And we can provide it in a form of report, um, whether it's uh, a message to the manager to really get on something, or whether um, it's um, something that helps with the store layout or um, team efficiency, um, things they can do to improve to make a better profit, but also to better align um, workers to be more efficient. Tally differs from industrial robots because it is designed to operate in an unstructured environment. Unlike industrial robots, which are programmed with the layout and floor plans of warehouses and factory floors, Tally uses advanced sensors such as LiDAR and depth cameras to detect obstacles in real time. Tally's software also tries to understand the human element by avoiding large crowds as not to obstruct the shoppers in store experience. Many of the robotic advances occurring in public spaces are designed to assist workers in completing everyday tasks. Cobot arms are being deployed in restaurants and stores. Telepresence robots are being used in medical clinics. And delivery bots are helping to bring goods to customers. These robots will have to communicate in new ways with the humans in their environments. That level of interaction with humans is going to increase. So I think a, a great example is, is sidewalk delivery robots. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, we're starting to see those being deployed in, in scale, in scale um, certainly at some of the university campuses. But if you think of whatever city you're in and the sidewalks and how they're structured, if there's one sidewalk robot, okay, that's fine. You can probably figure out how to maneuver around that. But if there's a, a couple and they are doing different tasks, you as, as the pedestrian, you want to feel comfortable knowing where that robot's going to go, how it's going to interact with you, and you want to still be able to cross the street and do everything you want to do without having to worry about the robot. Around the world, several cities have launched robots into public spaces. The reactions to these robots have been mixed. Robots being deployed into public spaces will have to answer several questions that are more than just technical they will need to address social issues of how they are being deployed. Is it benefiting or infringing upon society? And who ultimately controls the robot in public spaces? Kate Laudenheim is the choreographer and founding artistic director of The People Movers. Her artistic work in association with the robotics, automation, and dance lab explored the role of female gendered features in robotics today, which can be seen in robots like Sophia from Hansen Robotics or Pepper from SoftBank Robotics. So I think in a lot of the questions around like what, um, how can we make robots like more of a part of our social fabric? I have follow-up questions. I'm like, well, what are they supposed to do? Like what, what function are they supposed to, to, assist, to assist in? I wonder if we thought about robots less as like machine-based copies of humans and we thought of them more like machines or tools that we can that we can use in our lives. If that changes the way that we that we think about them, maybe some of our fears and anxieties around them. The rise of robotics seems to be an inevitable future. Businesses and governments are approaching automation to help combat labor shortages and enhance day-to-day -day operations. However, the adoption of automation in public spaces will come with hesitation and public opinion will be as important as the technological advancements that make it possible. The story of the robotic future will continue to evolve. Learn more about how the future will unfold with Mechanical Engineering's special report.